with the screw thing. Mm-hmm. You meet Screw, you link up with Screw. I met Screw through Bam. Through Bam, okay. I screwed his record myself, and I and I put Screw version, and I didn't talk to Screw. Bam said, "How can you give this to me?" He said, "Lump, you ain't know." I heard his music at Surround by Sound. I used to hate it until I heard "I Want to Be Down" remix. Hmm. Screw had that whole "Oh my God." And then the other one that I love from Screw was hard to think when your mind goes blank. Yeah. With the Dalia in the, the remix, background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my yeah. God, yeah. bro. Yeah. See, my homeboy was a cold-ass DJ. Niggas at the box was talking about trying not to say the N-word no more. Brothers at the box didn't want him up there. They act like they did. They lying. The reason why is when Screw hit the fader this way, the he, left he turn, said, case, he switched it up. it up. Backwards, yeah, yeah. No, we can't do that. Oh, they were scared. But you know what tripped them out? The basketball team at Rice got on Channel 13 and said how they warmed up the Screw music before anything oh it's a clip you can go back and find it it's on channel 2 or 11. it's not 13. well screw start doing screw people don't know he was cold at regular speed so i met him and nikki the same night i went to him like a man hey homie this is when he djing this is like no nah, it was he i met him at the club i met him at pocket what is they, they used to call it, this is club where they used to shoot pool at no matter no i take that back i met screw a boomerang that night we was on the side of boomerang and i said man i'm lump man i'm bam's manager I messed this up, bro. Like, I literally called your record, of, I called his record a version, and you didn't do it. He said, Lump, Bam was like, man, how can you say it's a screw version and screw didn't do it? So I was like, damn, that, that makes sense. I had talked to Daryl Scott because I met Daryl Scott through Floyd. Hmm. He used to get all the Daryl Scott exclusives, 12 and a half, 7 and a half, 13 and a half, all of the mixtapes. So Daryl was cool with screw, so I kind of, hey, D, I got to go talk. He said, man, just go talk to him. I said, cool. I said, man, I apologize. He said, man, I like you. He said, most people do that and they don't ever come talk to me. He said, you made a mistake, you came to me. He said, man, I respect that. He gave me a pound of hug. And this is like around what year? This is 90, I graduated from college in 94, so this was 96. 96. So this is like prime screw era. What? Yeah. He just had a club on Hillcroft in Maine. They used to open up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Hmm. You couldn't get in there. Pat used to be the MC. Screw was the DJ. You have a club full of people in there banging out the screw, and he mixing live. Nothing like it in the world, homie. Man. $25 to get in. This was before Houston. Because, you know, Houston is a $10 city. You pay more than $10. People ain't. We just not getting to the point because brothers start traveling, getting their credit right, fixing their teeth, getting their clothes right, spraying <laughs> on cologne because they travel. <laughs> they see what sections cost. Then people like Candy, people like Kurt, you know, people like the Roxy, Brian and them. Okay, yeah, you want to get up in here, you got to pay a little bit more. I got pictures of Jay-Z and Bun B rocking out at the Roxy after the concert, after the Woodlands, hmm. after the Rock the Mic. I got them pictures. Paint. I always had my camera with me because I always had to document everything. So that's how my photography kicked in. I've, like that picture of Screw that everybody has with his hat backwards like that. I took that picture, that ring that he has on. I sent him to New York with Justo, where he fell asleep on the air with uh, uh, Funkmaster Flex. Cause he no was so shit. high off. He missed the plane three times. Tommy Langston and Nicky can tell you that just to get there. He sleep. He used to stay up for four days and then sleep for three. Popping pills, drinking drink, smoking fry. People don't like talking about that. But the reason why we have people repeating the same behavior is it's because we don't this, talk about this, it. It's just not out there, yeah. We yeah. ran Andrew Chung out of here from Houston Press who, who made a derogatory article on Screw. You can't find him around here nowhere. You ain't going to talk about my home. I don't care what kind of problem he had. You weren't saying that when he was alive. So you ain't gonna say it when he died. No, nah, partner, we don't do that. I was the cat who used to have to call the radio station on July the 20th to tell him that it was his birthday and November 16th to remind him that he died. And now everybody screwed up and screwed out. I ain't got a problem with it because his name lit. When I went to a rave one time and they had a video game hooked up to audio and they slowed down the pitch to the sounds on the video game while these kids in there dropping tablets. Mm. That's when I knew the culture was crazy. Mm. That's why I was so glad that I took the picture that I never got paid a dime for when everybody else getting paid for it. But when Screw come back and pull them on their toe when they sleep, that's on them. I did what was right by my homeboy. Clyde actually designed the, the one I Don't Want to Hurt No More because that was one of Screw's favorite songs. And that hat is backwards. If you look at that picture for real, you'll notice that the two diamonds are missing out of the ring because Screw used to fall asleep and just fall out and knock the diamonds on the floor. So they was out. So if you ever look at that picture, you'll see my El Camino in the background. Hmm. You'll see Screw with his hands up, and you'll see the two diamonds out of the ring. Yeah. That same picture on that same day, 
we had a Brad van and a Kobe Bryant van because OJ, the dude who I burnt up, he started working for Columbia and Leslie Wyatt from rap lot was the regional for Columbia. That day I took him by the screw shop and that's the day that I took that picture. Hmm. I got another picture of screw standing by the coat by the uh, Brat van because they had two Bronco, they had two Tahoes wrapped, and that was the day that I took them famous pictures of him standing up by his Impala with the Fubu shirt on, him with the hat backwards, pop, and then him over at the Brat and Kobe's truck. Man, okay, so all right, screw in '96, you meet him. What's his impression? You were saying like he was much smaller, you know? What he I was mean? a little, he, he was a little chubby, but he wasn't that. But see, when you drink like that, it processes out of sugar on the other side. Sugar don't break fructose corn syrup, screw a fried chicken from gas stations before it was Popeyes and churches. He ate them fried ass burritos. He drank sodas. He ate peanuts. Then you taking them drugs. And then I probably gonna get a lot of flack for this, but this is the truth. A lot of the cats around screw, if they weren't around him for the drugs because he had the money, they was around him because they could sell it to him because they know he had money. Hmm. So how you gonna help push him in the grave and then cry at his funeral? That ain't no friend. Friend tell you what you need to know, not what you want to hear. You say, oh, he a grown man. If you my friend and I consider you brother, I'm looking if you're messing you. up, yeah. look here, homeboy. And if you value our friendship that much, you'll, I'm either going to move away around because I can't see you kill yourself like I did. Like when he moved to Sugar Land, I had to stop because the drug, I, don't, I don't do drugs, bro. Like I drink, I smoke cigars and I drink uh, Uncle Nears. That's it for me. I'm cool. I don't like being not in my right mind, bro. I like being relaxed. So you were saying you were saying when he when he moved to Sugar, it was a when you say that's like a difference. You notice the difference when he moved from man. You the know when you get money, man. To, money amplifies who you are, right? And what you are. Screw wasn't no bad dude, but Screw liked what he liked. But I ain't gonna let nobody muddy my homeboy name up. Yeah, like that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, I don't care who you are. Yeah, and I ain't gonna let y'all lie and talk about how much y'all loved him when he was here, and then y'all don't even want him on radio station. Because of some bull corn. No, it's because at regular speed, he'd tear your ass up. He was cold, man. Them little fat ass fingers. Anytime you can take two instrumentals and one acapella and make everything, you know how hard that is as a, as yeah, a, as a producer sure. and a DJ. Yeah, yeah. He did that like he was nothing. Yeah. No, smoking, tell a, what, smoking a cigarette that was dipped in formaldehyde. And that blows my mind. Like when people talk about that, I'll be like, man, you talking about smoking frying doing Dog, this? This is This wild. is the funniest story in the world. If I'm lying, call, call D Shot. I had all of the accounts. So the, the street reps would come deal with me because the regionals would come say, hey man, give my artists a second round. Cause the regionals at that time, they work radio. But the artists, I had street artists, I had D shot. People give 40 the credit for the out of the trunk, but you really got to give it to D shot, but D shot went to jail. 40 amplified it. It's just how it happens. I had D shot down here. He had a, a record called True Worldwide Players. Screw loved that record. So I took these shot over the screw house. This was at the house before Sugarland, but at the house house where that, with the know. wood room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shot was like, I want to go. I want to go see DJ. I want to go see uh, DJ Screw. Now mind you, shot six five, slowed up. His voice is in in soprano. Hey, hey, homie, let's let's go over there. Let's go over there and go see Cuddy. Let's go. Let's go see. I said, all right, shot. We going over there. I said, now Screw's a different character, homie. And by this time, me and Screw was cool because I worked all of the records, all of that money he was paying in sound waves. He had to do that no more. I gave it. You bringing them? You bringing them joints? I ain't get the records, man. He used to lie, and I tell you how I found out he was lying about them records. <laughs> so we go, we take D shot over the screw house, <laughs> and uh, he was like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, uh, Cuddy, uh, well respected on the West. We know you love Sibo. Can you can you show me what you get down here, honey? Could you show me? Could you show me?" Screw said, "Man, no question, I got you." So he go in there, he crank up the turntables. I was like, why all these tape decks? He said, this is where I do my duplication. So, so you manufacture? Yeah, that's what you call it. This is before he started going to the people on the Southwest and doing the tapes. When they was white, they were still gray at that time. So Screw got the going at it. He was going in. He was mixing, man, he was doing everything West Coast to show shot what it was. All of a sudden, he put out that, that stick. Shot's eyes got big. He said, oh, you know, cool. You know, he's a bay dude. He, screw going at it. So he's spinning, and Screw get to a point where it's just instrumental, play him banging, he blowing on this damn cigarette, cigarette wet as hell. You want some? Oh, I'll pass on me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So we cool. So Shaw's like, well, man, let's you know we got other runs. We can't really get out of here, Cuddy. Be careful. Showed him a pound. Screw gave him some tape. Shaw tried to pain. Of course, he wouldn't let him. 
So we walking out to the car. School had a big ass front yard, and the yard kind of had a grade to it. It kind of like went down. He said, "No, can I ask you a question?" I was like, "Yeah." He said, "What? What the fuck is you doing? What did he do? Pick up a house? <laughs> that's Sherman. He's smoking. That's Sherman because we call it on the West Coast. We call it wet Sherman. Right, right, right. He was right. like, "What are you gonna do? Pick up a house? Turn over a car?" He said, "Man, get your cutty. Man, that shit's, shit's terrible." Oh man, I'm talking about shot had me dying. And see, and that was the thing man. because you know, from my understanding, is that Screw was smoking and it wouldn't really be like a. It's just like he's anything not tripping else. out. He's not getting. He's not tripping out doing all that. Nah, he, he just mellowed out and he got the. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was. It, it was a gift enhancer for him. He got better on the turntables when he was towed. Hmm. But one day at the DMD video shoot for 25 Lives, I was so mad at Screw and Tommy Langston mixed with his uh, record pool. He was Screw's manager at the time. We had the 25 Lives video shoot. I'm in there for about 1.9 seconds. Screw was eating. Mid-stroke. Sleep. I said, Tommy, we got to help him. Hmm. Friends tell you what you need to know, not what you want to hear. Man, when he, bro, that hurt me, man, because everybody around him wasn't saying nothing. Yeah. Oh, man, he going to do what he going to do, lump. Bro. And I guess you're right, because at the end of the day, after he died, then when Mo died, first Big Mello had died, you know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, like. But Big Mello's, Big Mello's thing wasn't related. It was just a car wreck, right? It was just right? a car wreck, but yeah. you, when you speed and coming off the 610, you going around there like you know how you get to 610 and you exit uh uh Stella Link yeah and you driving down and mm -hmm. the big ass poles the mm -hmm. columns that hold up the freeway they flying down man and they boom ran into it that's a horrible death dog that burn mark still on that pole damn yeah you can't bro you you only get one body man it ain't like you got a spare one in the closet I'm 50 years old man it's like I thank God I don't look like what I've been through or what I've gone through. You know, and I didn't really, I really wasn't a drinker, you know, because I always like to maintain that. But with artistry, some artists need that. I, I, well, psychologically they do, but do they really physically need it? But then it becomes a need because your body turns on to it because now it's an addiction. You know, we saw Ray Charles. It's nothing new. It's just what it is, man. It's just that some people have enough money to go get corrected. Some people have enough people in their corner to get it corrected. And then some people have enough money to go hide. But most of us have enough money to keep doing. That's like I don't understand the culture right now. I love the way these dudes get money. But y'all teaching us how to be like people talk about the zombie apocalypse. Y'all are zombies, dog. Like hmm. who takes who takes pills and tabs like that? Why is this boy so scary where he didn't took all of these pills and he didn't died on the plant? Like, homie, like, yeah. how many more examples do you need? But when your big homies don't tell you something, or if y'all not listening to the big homies, and some of them don't want to listen, because some of the big homies is really on some bull corn and they ain't did nothing with their life and they trying to drag. I get that. But the cats who are successful and who have done it, even the cats who have failed, you still can learn, like, but maybe was I it, need to do that. But was it ever anybody around screw like that? Because it yeah. seems like a lot of that kind of was just culture. Like, everybody was smoking fry. Just everybody it was, was sipping but drink. Just because it was culture, was... that don't make it right. But when you No, don't make it right, of, of course. But I'm saying, was he ever surrounded with anybody to be, to be that wasn't in that enough to be like, hey, man, you know, let's... A couple of... I mean, I did. I can't... Yeah. I can't I, you know what? It's very inconsiderate and dismissive and very, very bogus for me to talk about what other people did and didn't do. Yeah. All I can say is, I wasn't around a lot when he was around a lot of the mother ones. He was around cats, and I ain't talking about SUC members. I'm just talking about period, like people who were around him that 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 I just thought that weren't, you know. Was it more like street cats or just? I, I'm everybody, street yeah. cats. Some cats were affiliated with the clique. Some cats in the clique, like man, you know, he just gonna do. Okay, I can't be complicit. The Bible says, "How can two be? To, how can two agree? How can two walk together unless they be agreed?" I'm not doing that, man. If I told you how I felt. And you still keep doing it. I love you, man. My love is actually going to grow stronger from you because I'm not going to see you that much. But, bro, what I'm not getting ready to do is watch you put this gun in your head and blow and pull the trigger. Because eventually, man, you're going to keep rolling the dice and eventually you're going to crap out. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the truth. Yeah. And now, look at this 20, what's this, 2020? He died. No, man, look. It's going to be 20 years. It's about yeah. to be 20 years, man. November yeah. 16th, I never forget it. I was on a conference call with a lecture and I had to tell them Negroes that screw died. Like I almost swallowed my heart that day. I don't literally. My first sermon was preached that day, on radio. T. Gray always says that he has it on tape. Hmm. They had to go get me of all people to come talk about Screw because they knew I was going to tell the truth because 
And then I see people saying stuff now. And now some of these, most of these stories are true. Everybody has their own version of Screw because Screw was different for different people. He meant different things to different people. I'll say that. But the one thing about it, like it said on the back of the shirt that I created, Henry from Hustlers University actually wrote the text on the back. You saw that? People always say, "Man, Screw could have been rich. Screw could have been that." All Screw ever wanted to be was a dope DJ. He didn't care about all the rest of the other stuff. He cared about being. You got to let the main thing be the main thing. 